It's February 9th, and I have a speech impediment, and it's February 9th, and I don't know what day it is in the studio, but what I do know is we're back at Chris's studio, which I love. All right, and um, we're very excited to have a very special guest on the phone. Hester Prynne, can you hear Tegan and Sarah? I can hear Miss Tegan and Sarah. How are you ladies doing? Woo! We're doing good. <laughs> I'm so excited to be in the park. Sarah's so singing a little outcast for you. I went over into a bear. <laughs> yeah, well, we do have a very friendly bear here in the forest. His name's Butch. Really? Yeah, we, um... He's actually, he's come in handy recently because we have a very angry neighbor next to the forest. And yeah, today on the way to the studio, we had an altercation with our neighbor. Tegan, tell me what happened. Well, thank you for asking me, Hester Bryn. Uh, <laughs> we, well, basically we noticed right away when we got here to the house in Portland where we're all living together while we make the record that there was this kind of crazy guy that lived across the street and we only called him crazy because his face was all bandaged okay and then as we saw him more like up close we realized like it's obvious he's been in an accident so then we were like felt bad that we called him crazy right but here we are a month later and and he feeds that's the other part of the story is that he feeds the birds on our lawn like he comes across the street in his weird nurse kind of pants and his bandages and he chucks like weird bird food like bread and seed and rice and, is he a crazy bird man yeah and he dumps the shit all over the lawn and the birds like like hundreds of them it feels like fly in and eat off our lawn and and it's but kind the of, cats the cats the, of the neighborhood have they've started it yeah out. they've taken to come well what do you expect it's the wild and they're throwing food out in the wild so other animals are coming now so the cats today were coming around and the guy started freaking out. We just happened to be leaving the house to go to the studio because we walk like a mile over to the studio every morning. And right. and and my dad's here visiting and so we were like, Oh dad, 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 come see the crazy bird man face and he's feeding the birds and so the birds are all landing and it's really crazy. Like they're circling the house and they're landing on the lawn and then this bird comes or I mean this like cat that we all befriended comes running across the street and the bird man freaks out and runs back across the street over to our house and he's swatting at the cat with a plastic bag and kicking it and he's all like oh my God. And and so then we called the cat over and we were petting the cat so the cat would leave the birds alone. But then the guy, I don't know, he thought it was our cat now, and so he's yelling at us, and we couldn't make anything out. But then um, another person who's staying in the house today was leaving the house, and the guy started yelling at her and saying that he was gonna that we had to move out because we he because we were into drugs and alcohol, which is not true, and that he was um what did what was he? He was he's a, desperado, a desperado, and he had a, a gun, and he was gonna come over and kill shoot us, shoot us, and slash and slit our throats. Our throats. And, oh my god! And so she was where, all like, where, Sarah, "Where are you guys living? Like, how did you find this house? Is it in the woods? It's who's kind of, living it's, there? It's like, really, I, have no, it's, I have no concept of what's going on over there, and I kind of like need to know. It's near the woods. It's kind of okay. So this is the situation. We're in Portland, and we're sort of in we're in the neighborhood where Chris's studio is, and it's a really safe neighborhood. But it's kind of one of those types. You said of neighborhoods. it's neighboring a meth. Well, there's it's one of those neighbors neighborhoods that they describe as in transition, which means that it's being gentrified, and so there's a lot of like cool hipster people and a lot of lesbians, and then there happens to be a lot of people like Birdman who are a little bit sketchy. They've got you know it's like they're stopped one stop short of putting their their car on on bricks outside of the front yard. You know about this? You're from like Long Island or whatever. You know there are no there are no crazy bandaged Birdman on, on the part of Long Island that I am from. Question has to print. Did Long Island Ice Teas come from Long Island? Did what? Long Island iced teas. Are they from? Did they come from Long Island? Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. I'm actually surprised I don't know the answer. I am so surprised that you don't know the answer to that. I know, but I don't drink a Long Island iced tea. I'm more of like a vodka soda type gal. I drank, so, I drank but, a Long Island iced tea the last time when I was 19. No, I wasn't even 19. I was like 18. I had a shaved head, and then I puked on the light <laughs> light rail transit system, and Sarah had to rub my back, and people were all staring, and so Sarah kept rubbing my back and yelling, Oh, bad fajitas, bad fajitas. Don't eat the fajitas. <laughs> um, I don't remember your original question because I'm drinking. <laughs> you, you ladies are my kind of ladies. Um, I really said, like, what is it, what's, is it going to be really different than the last second? Oh, right, right, sorry. It's like half a beer, you know, that you know how it gets when you haven't been drinking and then you drink half a beer and you're like, whoop-de-woo. That's like how that. I felt when I ate on the plane today was animal crackers and then I had a vodka soda to relax myself and I was, like, wasted drunk on an airplane. So I was like, oh. <laughs> That happened to me once when we were flying. To, I think All right, we were, answer her okay, question. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay. Jesus. Um, I do think that this album is different from our last record, but no different than, say, like, If It Was You to So Jealous. Like, right, okay. I think it's, like, a normal transition. Um, it's, I think it's a great record, and, like, it's really interesting because, you know, Ted, of course, our guitar slash keyboard yeah, player. Yeah, 
he was here about two weeks ago, and when he left, we were just going into Kung Fu to start drums and bass, and it's, like, amazing what Jason has done, like, for drums. Like, it just... It Jason really... uh, McGurr from Death Cab played drums on the record. Yeah. So oh, it, cool. And yeah. it's so neat, like, how what he added, it didn't, like, change our songs. It just, like, took them to this whole other level. So awesome. it's really cool. Like, now if, you so do, now if you do Acid, you'll see the record in 3D. Yeah. Wait, because of the drums? Yeah. yeah. I don't do acid, though. I'm, like, never done. I'm, like, terrified of acid. Yeah. But I might have to do acid to listen to this new record. Estefran, if we offered Northern State a Tegan and Sarah world tour, but you guys all had to do acid, would you do it? Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, fucking <laughs> awesome. You know what? I feel like with this record, is it possible you, you guys might get a laser light show going, and then, like, the 18-year-old crunk-ass Tegan on the Long Island Ice Teas might go see that laser light show? It is such a dance record. I'm telling you, you're going to you're gonna bust a rhyme. <laughs> 